What the hell? What the hell? This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is True Force, the Logitech G923 True Force racing wheel. Logitech G923 is the fourth generation racing wheel from Logitech, and it goes for $399 and comes in two variations, the Xbox or the PlayStation. The two wheels are nearly identical with exception to different buttons based on which system they're built for and pretty much even the same layout except for a couple of slight, slight differences between the two. The new version of the wheel does have a few new features that we will talk about during the review like True Force, their gimmicky title to the thing. It also has the programmable dual clutch launch control and a revised button layout. The Logitech G-Series wheels have been a go-to wheel for many of sim racers for a very long time, and we're going to find out today if the fourth generation of this wheel holds up to that title. Let's take a brief tour of what you get for your $400 with the Logitech G923 wheel, starting with the wheelbase, which comes with a permanently attached wheel rim, along with a three-pedal set including the clutch. The G923 wheel has up to 900 degrees of rotation and uses a Hall Effect sensor for long-lasting and accurate measurement. The wheel comes with a leather-wrapped rim along with its metal blue alignment strip at the top. And the wheel rim measures in at about 11 inches or 280 millimeters wide. The center spoke of the wheel is made out of brushed aluminum anodized in black and at the top of the center spoke is a teeny tiny little rev light or RPM strip. The buttons on the wheel are determined by which version you purchase, Xbox or PlayStation. And on the Xbox version, you have the four controller style buttons labeled A, B, X, and Y at the top right of the wheel. On the left top side of the rim, it has the directional pad, also known by Xbox players. To the left and the right of the non-metal center badge are the Xbox controller pause and menu buttons, and at the bottom side of the left and right spokes are the LSB and RSB buttons. On the downward spoke, there's a really cool plus and minus button on the left side, along with an enter button with a dial that goes around it, turning left or right, and then finally an Xbox button in the middle spoke. In total, that is 12 buttons, a four-way directional dial, and a two-way dial. And then the PS4 version actually has two more buttons on the center spoke. The wheel comes with clamps along with spacers for slim desks for mounting and also has the same two threaded spots for hard mounting that the Logitech wheel has always had. On the bottom of the wheel is a cleverly hidden plug-in points for the power supply, the pedal set, the USB wire, and a spot for an aftermarket shifter from Logitech. The pedals are mostly unchanged from the previous version and they feature a gas, brake, and clutch pedal each with a different amount of spring tension and then the brake pedal offering a progressive tension the further it is pressed. The gas pedal is reclined a touch more than the clutch or brake to allow for heel toe action and the pedal faces are also made of metal. The base itself is black plastic and on the bottom features carpet grabbers as well as hardware mounting points. Now the G923 is the latest version of the fourth generation of the wheels I mentioned. So let's go back in history a little bit and talk about where it all started. So back in 2006, Logitech came out with the G25 and that wheel changed the world forever. It was the first wheel that really brought high precision, great force feedback, a lot of additional features, and most of all, reliability. They were long lasting and it really, really was a significant change to the sim racing market at the time. The G25 was then followed by the G27 in 2010, the G29 or G920, which both came out in 2015. And over the years, we have seen some basic changes. Starting with the G25, and only two buttons on the wheel, straight cut gears that produced an annoying whirling sound, along with a three pedal set, and it also included a shifter that could be switched from H pattern to sequential. It featured what looked like the same pedals as today, but they had no progression. For the G27, we saw an upgraded wheel rim that had six buttons, and it had spiral cut gears that reduced the noise and friction of the wheel's movement. The pedals were mostly unchanged, 
but the shifter had lost its ability to be switched and was an H pattern shifter only. New to the wheel was that tiny little RPM or rev light above the wheel rim in the center. And then for the G29, it came with a sister wheel, the G920, one built for each console system along with the PC. The wheel rim had been substantially changed with console style buttons. The wheel rim carried over the rev light strip and the pedals got a little bit of attention with a progressive brake pedal feel. And in what was a downgrade to the wheel, the G29 or 920 no longer had a shifter included. The shifter was aftermarket and still was an H pattern only. And then comes the G923, and basically it's the same wheelbase, but it now has that true force technology built into it inside. It came with basically the same pedal set, but maybe even more of a progressive feel to the brake pedal. And then the wheel rim is very similar to a hybrid of the G29 and G920 rims, including the LED strip, and it still doesn't come with a shifter, although it has a slot to plug one in. Now let's move on to the installation and the setup of the Logitech G923 True Force racing wheel. And this is still the most common racing wheel on the planet. And therefore, just about every sim rig on the planet should be pre-drilled to accommodate this wheel base and pedal set. You should be able to hard mount it to any rig that you actually paid money for. And that's a great starting point. Now before I mount the wheel, I actually plug in all of the devices into the wheel rim. So I plug in the pedals, I plug in the power supply, and we rate, route the cables through the bottom. We can now install the base to our deck. I'm using an R seat S1, which is drilled for the wheel, so I move it into place. I tighten the front clamps to hold it in position, and then I bolt it to my rig. The pedals also have mounting locations, and my rig is pre-drilled for them as well. Bolt them down, adjust the distance, and we're ready to go. For the software side of things, we need to first download and install Logitech G-Hub. This will control most Logitech devices, including the G923 wheel. Once installed, you'll see the wheel and be able to make adjustments within the software. Adjustable options in the software are operating range or degrees of rotation, sensitivity, center spring strength and its on or off button, apply game settings button, torque, and audio effects. And at this point, our wheel should be ready to go. We'll just have to map our controls once we get in game. So I fired up Assetto Corsa Competizione. This is one of only two sims that at the time of testing actually acknowledged or had true force technology at the ready. So I fired it up and the game immediately recognized my wheel, mapped all my controls, and I was ready to pull off of pit lane. As I revved the engine, I think I found, or better yet, felt the first indication of true force. As the wheel would vibrate with my revs at a level I don't think I have felt before from a Logitech wheel. And after that, as I rolled the car out, I could feel a bit more road noise than before as well. But as the speed increased, those sensations went away and were replaced with a very inactive wheel. With very little tension or strength or force feedback being delivered, as I swerved the car back and forth, there was a hint of increase in power to resist those forces, but it was very light. And coming from driving on the stronger wheels of 2020, it was almost non-existent by comparison. It actually took quite a while of driving before my hands or brain could detect the forces being delivered and could use those feelings to actually drive the car by. I played with my settings and I still found the wheel to be so lightweight. After hours of driving and starting to grip the wheel with my fingertips, I started to feel the force feedback and what it was doing. It was there, deep down inside, but you had to listen oh so carefully to get it. There it was, a hint of oversteer, delivered quickly and on time for the game, but oh so quietly. Reduce throttle, steer into the oversteer, and we have saved the car. Wait, wait, there's a hint of understeer. Reduce braking and wait for the car's reaction and turn in. Whew, we made the corner. Yes, the signals are there and they are perfectly in sync with the game. You just can't hold the wheel too tightly or you might overpower them and miss the sensations. I did try a variety of games to see what the wheel could do. In iRacing, I found it to be much stronger, but then immediately ran into clipping issues. 
When I dropped the wheel straight to account for that, I was back to a very, very lightweight wheel. It was super fast turning. It was predictable to drive with. It was just so light on the force feedback. The weakest wheel I've driven in a long while. When driving iRacing, if I were to do a blind test between this and a G29, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference at all. And when driving a Seto Corsa Competizione, if I grab the wheel like I do other wheels, I can barely feel the resistance and the delivery of the force feedback. But when I loosened my grip, it was there, again, just so subtle. It was when I switched over to rally racing, WRC9 in particular, that I found and was reminded of why so many people love the Logitech wheel. I do believe this is the fastest turning, quickest reaction wheel on the market next to a direct drive. And for me, in rally racing, when I'm making saves or quick flicks and steering to cause reaction from the car, this wheel actually can do it better or as well as any. Now the sensations of what the car was doing were still highly muted in terms of the left to right force feedback and still requiring a delicate touch to feel. But what was rather strong was the vibrations in the wheel. When fighting for lateral traction with a sideways car, the rumble of the G-Series wheel was the most prevalent force you're gonna feel and hear. With that age old chatterbox vibration noise that can't be missed. It is the strongest thing that this wheel does. In the end, I found the wheel to be very accurate, quick turning, and predictable, despite the light force feedback. Now granted, force feedback is probably the most critical aspect of a wheel when doing a review or when considering what wheel you're going to purchase. But there are other factors and these factors have led to why some manufacturers have gone to like a family concept where you could use multiple wheel rims so that every driver can get things dialed in. Now in the case of the Logitech G923, it is a fixed wheel. This is the only wheel available. So let's talk about other aspects of the wheel before we move on to the pedal set. Now one could say that the buttons on a controller are relatively cheap. I mean, they don't really have a positive click. They're very tiny and they don't offer much feedback when compared to a high-end steering wheel. However, they are extremely proven and long-lasting. I found the tiny buttons to be in abundance and easy to reach on the wheel. This wheel rim ends up being highly functional. I also found that with controller buttons, the dial, a handful of unique buttons. This all made this wheel very easy to remember in terms of the functions that I had mapped. Xbox buttons for certain mappings, directional pad for others. You have a two-way dial for something and the up and down plus and minus buttons for another function. Grouping different aspects of driver controlled options was really, really good with this wheel. The shifters are made of brushed aluminum and feel good on my fingertips with no sharp edges and paddles that are large enough to reach from most positions on the wheel. They have about 3 eighths of an inch of travel and end in a gentle click. There is enough tension on them to prevent accidental shifts, but definitely could have more resistance to make me happy. When it comes to the LED RPM strip, I have always enjoyed that feature as a bonus. It's nice to have, it's flashy on the wheel, and despite being dim and subtle, it does add to the look and appeal of the wheel. The last thing to talk about in regards to the wheel is the dual clutch system they have built into it. I found it to be clumsy, needing three buttons pressed to make it happen, and it sacrificed a button to its operation. For me, a guy who has always preferred a clutch dump with my throttle controlled by my foot, it was not really needed, but it's there for those who want it. The pedals on the G923 are still mostly unchanged. I mean, they are far more progressive than going all the way back to the G25 pedals, but they resemble and almost operate the same as the G29 or 923, maybe with a little bit more progression. If you put me in a blind test, I still wouldn't be able to tell them apart. And they are the kind of pedals that work great, but are lightly sprung. They're short throw and they're best driven in socks. It makes me think of the wheel's strength and how I have to hold it delicately. Well, a shoe is big. It is heavy footed when using these pedals. In socks, 
You can be delicate on the pedals like you need to be. The throttle is lightly sprung and offers two inches of travel, just enough to modulate the throttle in most cases. The brake pedal does have a fair amount more pressure and it is progressively delivered. The movement of the brake pedal is limited to about an inch and a half and it allowed for much better braking than I expected, especially coming off of a very high performance pedal set before it. In fact, this is the best potentiometer based brake pedal that I have ever felt and I was able to race and more importantly brake with it very effectively. Despite its heavier pressure, I also found it to operate more accurately with socks than with shoes. The clutch pedal was snappier than the gas pedal, which is an attempt at a clutch feel by comparison, but it misses the mark. It also has two inches of travel and will work well enough for race starts and super quick clutch dumps. For those true lovers of heel and toe, the action could be mimicked with these pedals for effect or even for advantage in certain cars on iRacing, but nothing like the feeling of working pedals of a real car in heel and toe fashion. The pressure of these pedals overall is high enough that I would recommend hard mounting them on your rig or backing them for desktop racers. So that pretty much gives you my experience with the Logitech G923 True Force racing wheel. I mean, it's the kind of wheel that has a lot of place in my heart for its history and what it's done for the sim racing market. And at the same time, it's hard for me to say that I haven't been slightly left, let down by the lack of evolution in this wheel set. And in some ways, not coming with a shifter, it's even kind of declined. But let's go ahead and make things perfectly clear with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off with the good, and that being Logitech reliability compatible with every rig on the market, compatible with every game on the market, simplicity, one USB plug, easy software, lots of buttons, good placement, good modulation or progression to brake pedal for a potentiometer, console compatibility, very smooth and fast turning. Highly accurate. Comfortable wheel rim. And now on to the not so good, and you probably can guess the first one, and that is weak force feedback. Slight left to right wobble in wheel rim. Same old look, same old interior parts, same old feel expensive for what you get loud vibration noises force feedback very little throw to the pedals throttle in particular and then finally true force it only has two games that are compatible with it however i stand corrected because as of this morning iRacing has implemented true force technology and you now can adjust the vibration in iRacing for this wheel which I haven't tried out just yet, but it's now three games, but that's still not every game compatibility just yet. So now let's get on to the bottom line. The bottom line is this. The Logitech wheel, 10 years ago, it was the go-to wheel. It was the standard, the industry standard wheel, the best thing you could get hands down. Five years ago, it was still a great go-to wheel and a great starter wheel. And when they came down in price a little bit, it was the best deal in sim racing. And to this day, it is still winning championships at the highest levels. But now it is a little dated. At 400 bucks, where are the interchangeable wheels? Over and over again, I said light force feedback. Where is the force speed? It's 20 20 people this is the fourth generation of this racing wheel where's the beef where's the force feedback where's the power and that takes me back to why why this wheel why this change why this naming why now and some people out there might ask me sean is this still your entry level wheel of choice your starter wheel that you would recommend to most and i have to tell you at $400, absolutely not. You can do better for other wheel companies for $400. Now, 
the history of this wheel is I've seen G920s down at $249. I've seen them at $299. And when this drops to that pricing, this is going to be a steal. This is going to be the best wheel you can get at $249, hands down. It's going to be the best wheel you can get at $299, hands down. But even at $350, I got to start wondering, are there better options that I can go to than this steering wheel? So you will have to wait for the same price drop for this wheel to come into its own market. And despite every con on my list, make no mistake, a skilled driver could still win a championship at the highest level in sim racing with this very wheel and pedal set, no problem. So I hope that tells you everything that you want to know about the Logitech G923 True Force wheel. I hope it shows you the difference between this and the previous generations of this wheel. And of course, if you want to know about other videos as they come out, be sure to subscribe to this channel here. And if you want to see live unboxing, the live testing that went on with this wheel, be sure to check us out. Simpit Live on Twitch. That's where we do all of our live testing there. I hope you enjoyed the show. This is the Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.